we'll start with reading the data this is the CTG data that we are going to use so I'm going to change the name to a shorter name we'll just call it data let's look at the structure we can see that we have 2126 observations and there are 22 variables out of these first 21 variables are independent variables and the last one which is NSP has three levels so although R reads this as integer but we want to convert this into ordinal data represented by 1 2 and 3 where 1 is normal 2 is suspect and 3 is pathologic so we need to convert NSP into a ordinal variable so now if you again run the structure line you'll notice that now NSP has been converted into an ordinal factor with three levels where 1 is less than 2 and 2 is less than 3 so 3 is the worst condition and 1 is the normal condition let's look at the summary so we see that uh, there are 1655 observations with value 1 295 with value 2 and 176 with 3 out of 21 independent variables we'll also notice that tendency takes only three values negative 1 0 and 1 so i'm going to convert tendency also into a categorical variable Now I'm going to cross tabulate tendency and NSP. So this uh, cross tabulation clearly shows that we have sufficient sample size or frequency in each cell. Now let's uh, partition the data into training and test data sets. So we are going to partition this into 80% for training and 20% for testing. So we'll call first sample as train to represent training data set. And the second one will be test. So you can see that uh, test data now has about 414 observations and train data set has 1712 so next uh, we'll carry out the ordinal logistic regression and this is also known as proportional odds logistic regression model we have to use a library called mass we are going to store the results in model the function that we will use is called POLR so it stands for proportional odds logistic regression and the format is similar to what we have done in decision tree or logistic regression so NSP is the dependent variable and initially I am going to use only first three variables just to illustrate the steps and later on I will go into details so let's uh, just use first three so you can see first three variables are lb ac and fm we also need to add has equals true to make sure that we get standard errors actually instead of using the entire data set we should make the model based on train data so i'm going to replace this with train and if we run this we get the model and we can look at the model using summary so we have the coefficients for these uh, three independent variables lb 
AC and FM. So the interpretation of coefficient for FM is that for one unit increase in FM, we expect about 6.3 increase in the expected value of NSP in the log odds scale and given that all other variables in the model are held constant. And similarly, we also have two intercepts. We can also see that uh, this output gives us standard error as well as T values. The only thing uh, that is missing that will be interesting to obtain are the P values. So we can obtain coefficients from this model using COEF. We can assign this to C table, which is coefficient table. And in fact, I'm going to put parentheses at the beginning and also at the end, so that when we run this line, we also get a printout. So when I run this line, you can see we get all the values into one table. So in the next line, we are going to obtain the p values using the data from the model. And then we can also get a print of this C table, which contains not only the original C table, but also the p values obtained in the previous line. So you can see that in the same table we have the coefficient values, standard error, p value, and also p value. You may notice that uh, all the three variables LB, AC, FM seem to be statistically significant because p values are quite small. So this is 1.8, 10 to the power of negative 7. And this is uh, almost 0, so we have almost 100% confidence that this is significant. And third independent variable fm also seems to be significant. We'll make the prediction using predict command. So this prediction will be done using the model coefficients. And for the data set, we'll make use of training data set. The only thing is just to illustrate it, I'm going to first uh, do this prediction for maybe first five observations. And the prediction we want to do is to predict uh, the probability. So from the training data set, we want to make a prediction for first five rows. And let's put another comma. And for column, we'll leave it blank. That means all the columns. And let's see what we have in PRED. So we have a prediction for the probabilities. If you want to reduce this uh, number of decimals, what you can do is you can print PRED digits equal to maybe 3. So these are the predicted probabilities that we have. So using these, we can write down the equations and we can also find out the probabilities of NSP being 1 which is innocent or NSP indicating a value of 2 which is a suspect patient or when NSP is 3 where the patient is pathologic. So here is the formula for calculating the probabilities using the coefficients uh, that we just now obtained for the three variables LB, AC and FM. So we have this data from first five rows for these variables in the training data and let's calculate Y. So the coefficient for LB is this number here. So times LB plus coefficient for AC is this negative 817. 
times AC and actually we can ignore FM because all these five values are zero so we don't need to use that third term so these are the values for Y for first five data points in training data and then we calculate probability that this patient is normal or it's one so this is one divided by one plus exponential of negative alpha one so alpha one is this 4.97 etc So if we copy this, we get all the probability values for P1. So you can see that these numbers match with what we obtained here. So 69%, 95%, then 91, 81, 67. Similarly, we can calculate probability for one or two. So alpha 2 is this number here. So this is a probability of 1 or 2 and now we can calculate probability of a patient being 2 or suspect by doing this minus this. And you will notice that these are the values in the second column and similarly we can find probability for a pathologic patient by doing one minus and that's the third column that you'll see so nine percent one percent two five and ten percent so this is how these probabilities are calculated So now I'll go back and make the complete model. So instead of uh, these three, let's say we want to use all other variables. So we have totally 22 variables and NSP is the response variable. So if you want to use all remaining 21, you may just put a dot. And then when we run this, you see that there is a warning sign. So there's no error, but there's a warning if you go one by one and look at the variables like which variable is creating a problem in the analysis you may find that uh, one of the variables called max m a x is the one and out of the 21 variables we can easily drop it from further analysis so if you want to remove anything you use minus sign and say max if you want to add a variable we use a plus sign to remove a variable we use minus sign so when we run this without this max variable you see that we don't get any warning so now we can run the model so you can see all 20 variables are included and we don't have max so let's also calculate p-value now and see which variables are significant so you can see this last column here let's say in this analysis uh, we want to include all those variables in which we have at least 90 percent confidence that means the p-value of 0 0.10 or below is acceptable to us so if you look at the first one it is uh, 10 to the power of negative 1 which means p-value is 0.15 so our confidence level is uh, 1 minus 0.15 which is only 85 percent lb is not contributing so we can drop lb from further analysis so let's keep on doing that so i'm going to do minus lb to drop lb next variable is significant this one also is significant with 90 percent confidence tendency zero is not significant but because tendency 1 is, we'll still keep it. 
so we also drop median so we have one two three four five six variables out of 21 being dropped and again check if we have any other variable which is not significant after uh, running these steps we find that fm also is not significant now and mltv so this process continues till we find a set of significant variables and that will become our final model so now all the variables that are in the model are statistically significant so we are going to treat this model as our final model and whatever coefficients we get so those estimates can be used for making further predictions so now let's uh, do the prediction for the entire train data set and we are going to remove this so that we can also do the calculations for confusion matrix so we store the predictions in pred So now the matrix is uh, saved in tab. If you want to create this matrix as well as look at it simultaneously, we can put this whole thing into parenthesis. And when we run this, you'll find that you also get the confusion matrix table. Let's calculate misclassification error. And misclassification error will be 1 minus the sum of these numbers which are on the diagonal so I'm going to say DIAG for diagonal and this diagonal is in tab and then we divide this by the overall sum. So let's run this. It gives a misclassification error of 0 0.137 which is about 13.7%. Let's uh, do the calculation for predicted values from the test data. So let's call that PRED1. So we'll use the model that we built using the training data. And now we say we want to apply that same model on the test data. And then we do the calculation for the matrix. So let's store that in tab 1. And if you select this and also put a parenthesis and run and then we do the same thing to get the misclassification error that we did earlier so actually it should be tab 1 because tab was for training data set so we get uh, misclassification error of about 13.6% so if you look at uh, misclassification error based on the training data, it was about 13.7%. So we don't see a major difference. And uh, that also indicates uh, consistency in our model that we built. So remember, we used 80% of the data to make this model. Remaining 20% also shows that the model is behaving in a consistent manner. And the misclassification error is around a similar number. If you look more closely, uh, you may find that the maximum misclassification in the training data is this, 92. In reality, there were 92 patients who belong to second category, which is a suspect, whereas the model misclassified them into category 1, which is normal. And a similar behavior you can see, the maximum misclassification number is 23. And that also is for two actual and predicted one.